Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Today's topic is hash tables. Hey everybody, today I want to talk about hash tables, which is a favorite data structure of mine and a lot of other programmers out there. And not just because it sounds like it should be illegal in some states or the name of Willie Nelson's favorite restaurant. I mean, seriously, every time I'm having a conversation with someone who's not a programmer and I mention a hash table, everyone always gives me this weird look, like this little smirk on their face. Like there's no way that's a real thing. But it is a real thing and today we're gonna talk about it because it's super useful. Also note that all of the source code for this video is available online through Patreon. Thank you to all of you that have contributed to the channel. More information on that in the description. Now to hash tables. Now to understand hash tables, we need to first talk a little bit about linked lists and arrays. If you're new to linked lists, I do have a few videos that I've made on those. I'll link to those in the description. You may wanna watch those first. It may make the rest of the video make more sense. But from the beginning, when we first start programming, we're used to using arrays and now lists once you learn linked lists in order to keep track of different variables, different objects, different chunks of data that we want to keep track of, we like to store them in arrays and lists. So these data structures are simple and they're sequential, meaning that they keep objects one after another in a particular order. Linked lists are a little bit more flexible than arrays and make it easier to insert things in the middle or delete stuff from the middle without shifting things and copying. And But what about finding things in both of these data structures? Now with a linked list, you're going to start at the beginning and you're going to go through the list one element at a time until you find the one that you're looking for. Now computers are fast, and so if I have a list of 10 elements, well, that's not too terrible. But if I have a list that has 10 million elements, I might get lucky and the one that I'm looking for might be the first element in the list, but I might get unlucky and I may have to search through 10 million different elements in order to find the one I'm looking for. So it could be really fast, it could be really slow. Sometimes you're gonna hear this referred to as a linear time operation, or they might say that its time complexity is big O of N. All that means is that the expected time that it takes to complete the operation is going to depend on the size on N, which is the, the size of the list. So as the list gets bigger, the time that it's expected to take in order to find what you're looking for is going to grow linearly. So basically the bigger the list, the longer the wait. And hash tables help us get around this Ideally, a hash table should be able to find the object we're looking for in constant time. Ideally, it doesn't matter how many items I have in my, in my data structure, I should still be able to find those items with the same amount of time and it should be really fast. Now that's the ideal case. We'll give it a little reality check later on as we actually implement these things, but that's the goal. That's what we're going for. So how does it work? Well, conceptually, a hash table is an array with a hash function. And yeah, I know that a hash function sounds like a party with a whole lot of weed being smoked, Focus people, this is serious stuff. So our hash function is going to take some input, it's going to map that input to a location in our array. And that's where our item is stored. So say we wanna store records of people in our table. And for each record, we are going to store their name, their age, their weight, stuff like that. And say we wanna look up people by their names. Then our hash function is going to take a name that's the thing we're going to look it up by. So it's going to take a string of characters and it's going to map that to an integer and that's going to be an index in our hash table. Now there are a lot of different hash functions out there and they have different strengths and weaknesses, but there's three things I want you to keep in mind when you're thinking about a hash function. First of all, calling the hash function on the same input should always produce the same output. If it doesn't, we're going to have problems and our hash table isn't going to work. Second, our hash function needs to be fast. The whole point of this is to make lookups fast, so if it takes a long time to compute our hash function, well, that's no good. And third, our hash function's results should be pretty random. So I wanna spend some time on this last one because it may not be obvious. Well, let's think of the simplest function that I can think of. Let's say it takes the name, and no matter what name you put in, it always produces a five. Now, you can't get any faster or simpler than that function, and it's super consistent. It always produces the same result, but it defeats the purpose because it's going to try to put every single person at location five in my hash table. And if I wanna store more than one person, that's going to be a problem. So we want different inputs to produce different outputs. We want different names to produce different locations in our hash table. And that's enough conceptualizing. Let's just look at how this works in code. So let's start out simple. We have a main function. Now let's assume that our hash table is going to store information about people. Let's give each person a name and let's allow names to be up to 256 bytes. While I'm up here, let's also define the size of our hash table. We'll start with 10. It's small, but it will work for now and we can always change that later. And we're gonna store a person's age as well. And we could add other personal information in here, but for now, this is gonna do because that doesn't really change anything as far as how the hash table works. Okay, now we need our hash function. In this example, I want to look up people by their names. So my hash function is going to take a name, it's a string, 
and map it to a location in the table, which is an unsigned int. And let's start out with a really stupid hash function. We'll just use that one I talked about before, one that always returns five just to get us started. We can only improve from here. Now, before we get into building the actual table, let's play around a little bit with the hash function. Let's try it out with a few different names because as we try different functions, I want to look at how they affect this mapping. If I compile it and run it, you can see that it prints out fives for all the names. So if I use this hash function, it will map everything to the same location in the table, which is location five, and that's not very helpful. So we want different names to map to different locations. So let's try something different. Let's try to use something like a checksum. So for this, I'm going to get the length of the string and then go through the string one character at a time and simply add up the values of the character. So this is the ASCII values of the characters. So let's declare a variable to keep our sum started at zero. And then each time through the loop, we'll just add the next character value to the sum. And then when we're done, we can return the sum. Now, if we compile this and we run it, now we're getting more random results, but they're still not as random as I would like. So let's add a little more randomness by also multiplying the sum each time by the character value. This just mostly spreads the values out a little more. And there are a lot of different ways we could do this. I'm just messing around here. It's not like this is the right or wrong way to do it. It's an okay hash function. It's going to work for today. If I had time, I'm sure we could play around with it and come up with an even better one. Okay, now if we compile it and run it, notice that the results are much more randomly spread out, but now we have another problem. The point of this hash function is to pick a location in the table and we only have 10 spots in our table. So these numbers are way too big. But we can solve this easily by just using the modulus operator like I recently showed you in a recent video, link below in the description. And this just wraps my numbers to ensure that they land between zero and the table size minus one. Now, if we compile it and run it, we end up with something a bit more random, but it's consistent and that's important. My function needs to always produce the same output for the same input. And now we have numbers that are actually going to fit inside our table. So that's important too. And of course we could change the table size to something bigger and we would get numbers that are bigger, but they're still fitting inside the table. But for now, let's just keep it small because this is going to illustrate another issue. Now a perfect hash function or an ideal hash function would always map different inputs to different locations. This function is not going to do that. If we keep adding more names, we're eventually going to get collisions. This is when two names map to the same location in the table. And you can see that here where Ron and Marin both map to position zero and Natalie and Bill both map to position six. So here we have two collisions and we're going to have to deal with that. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now let's just shift over and let's make our hash table. It's just going to be an array of pointers to people structs. Now why use pointers? One reason is space. With pointers, I don't need space for the full table unless I actually fill up the table. I just need space for some addresses and if your structs are small as they are in this example, then this doesn't make that much difference. But if the structs for people were really big, this would matter a lot more. The second reason I'm using pointers is that it makes it easy for me to tell when a spot in the table is empty because I can just set the pointer to null. So a null pointer means that that's an empty location. There's nothing stored there. So let's do that. Let's make a function that's going to set up the table. Initially, I want all of the entries in my table to be empty. So I'll just go through the table and set each of the pointers equal to null. We'll call our init function down in main just to make sure we start off with a clean slate. And let's also make a function that prints out the status of the table so that we can see what's going on. Now let's go through the table and if there's something in each slot, we'll print it out. If not, we'll just print out something that lets us see if it's empty. and then let's print out the table. Okay, so we'll compile it. Oops, I forgot a variable. And okay, compile it and run it. And there's our empty table, all ready to put some people into it. Okay, so now let's make a function that's going to insert a person into the table. This function will return a Boolean. True if we successfully insert the person, false if we don't. Let's make sure we don't accidentally call this function with a null pointer. Then let's compute the hash function of the person's name. And this is going to be the index or the location in the table where we are going to try to put the person. 
Then we check to see if the pointer at that location in the table is null. If the pointer isn't null, then somebody's already there and this is a collision. For now, let's just return false. So we're saying here, sorry, somebody's already there. I can't add you and we're gonna fix that later. But if the spot in the table is available, then we simply set the table to point to the new person and we return true because we were successful. Now let's see if it works. Let's make some people. I'll make Jacob, Kate, and Poe. And let's add them to the hash table. And then print out the status of the table. And what's with me today? Ages are ints, not strings. And compile it and run it. And you can see that they were added. And I'm not liking that I can't easily see where one printout of my table ends and the other begins. So I'm going to go up here and print out a start and end marker just to make things a little easier to parse visually. Okay, now that looks better. So that's great, but not yet very useful. The whole point of this hash table business is we want to be able to quickly look up people in our table. So let's make a lookup function that takes one argument, a name. That's what we're looking up by. And it returns null if the person is not in the table, and it returns a pointer to the person if it is in the table. And once again, let's compute our hash on the name. Then we're going to look at the location in the table. First, we check to see if it's not null, meaning something is there. And then we use strn compare to see if the names match. And if they do, then we return the pointer to that person. That means the person we we're looking for is actually in the table. Otherwise, we're going to return null. Now let's try this out. First off, let's try to look up a name that is in there. We'll look up Mpo because we know that that is in there and we can print out whether or not we found her or not. Next, we'll do the same thing with a name that we know is not in there. And oops, I tried to declare temp twice. And if we compile it and run it, notice that it doesn't find George, as we would expect, and it does find Mpo just as it should. Okay, now let's go back and look at our lookup functions. Notice that there are no loops in here. I'm not hunting through the array. This is true of our insert function as well. I'm not looking for an empty slot. I'm just using the hash function to pick the spot for me. And so this is going to be very fast and it's going to take roughly the same amount of time, no matter how big my table is or how many people I put in that table. Now you remember I was talking earlier about linear time operations or big O of N. This is what we call a constant time operation or big O of one, meaning that the time it takes for this operation to run is going to stay constant. If I was keeping people in a linked list or an array, I would have to hunt through this list and with a longer list, I would spend a lot more time. And really that's the magic of a hash table. Now for completeness, let's make a delete function. It's actually a lot like insert, except that we want to remove the person. So when we find the location, we save a pointer to it and then we remove it from the table to set it to null. And then I return the pointer that I saved to the caller so the caller can free the pointer if it happened to be allocated on the heap. And in this case it wasn't, so there's nothing to do. I can just ignore the pointer that comes back. So just to make sure it works, let's delete Mpo and then check to make sure she's no longer in there. We just wanna make sure the delete is actually working. And let's also print out the table for good measure. And if I compile it and run it, you can see that she's no longer there. Okay, so we have the basics working except for one thing, we haven't yet dealt with collisions. So let's add a few more people. I'm gonna add Sarah, Edna, Marin, Eliza, Robert, and Jane. Let's give them different ages. And then let's add them all to the table. Now, if I compile it and run it, notice that some of them weren't added. We're missing both Robert and Jane, and this is because the hash function mapped them to the same location in the table, so there was a collision. And so the first one that got there was inserted and the others failed. 
And this is a problem. Nobody wants a data structure that occasionally decides not to store your data, especially when there is plenty of memory and lots of space left in the table. When collisions occur, there are two traditional ways that people handle this. One is called open addressing and one is called external chaining. With open addressing, we're going to keep everything in the table. If the first location the hash function gives us is full, we need to look for another. And this can be done by either using the hash function again to try to find another location in the table, and there are different ways to do that. The simplest way to solve this is called linear probing. And with this, we start at the hash location, and then if that's taken, we don't actually call the hash function again. We just check the next location in the table, and then the next, and the next, until we find one that's available. Or maybe we go through the entire table, and eventually we get back to where we started and realize that the table is full. And at that point, we really can't add anything, so we're just done, sorry. So let's do this in our code. We need to update insert. So now we actually do need to add a loop and we're going to start at our hash location and then we're going to go until we find an open space in the table. If we go through the entire array and don't find one, then we're out of luck, so return null. Now take a moment and make sure this all makes sense. Okay, now I need to add this logic to both lookup and delete. In lookup, I'm going to start at the location the hash function gave me, and then just keep looking to see if I can find a match. In delete, we do the same, except as before, we delete the person and return a pointer to the struct. Now pause a moment and think about what this code is doing. It's using my hash function, but this searching has made things rather inefficient, especially when the thing we're looking for isn't there. In that case, we're always going to go through the entire table. If the table is large, then these operations that used to be fast are now quite slow. So let's make one improvement, and instead of setting deleted nodes back to null, we're just gonna use a value like null that I know will never be a valid address. And so any pointer that I see that has this value, I know it's been deleted. And this allows me to determine when I can stop hunting. So if I find a deleted node, I have to keep looking, but if I find one that's null, then I can stop because I know the node I'm looking for can't be beyond that point. Okay, so let's update our insert logic. Now, if we find a pointer that is null or deleted, we use it. In lookup, we want to bail if we find a null pointer. If we find a deleted node, just continue on to the next iteration. And if it's not null or deleted, we check to see if the names match, just like we did before. And then we do the same thing in delete. Return if the node is null. Keep going if it's deleted. And then delete it otherwise. And if I compile it, oh, we get warnings. Because, okay, what did I do? I cast it to the wrong type, sorry about that. And now if we compile it, fine, and we run it, and we get a seg fault. Be what did I do? Because I forgot to update my print table function, okay, and it's trying to dereference one of these deleted node pointers, which of course isn't ending well. So let's just adjust the printing code to check to see if it's been deleted. And now we compile it and we can run it. And notice now that we were able to add all of our people. And we can also see where the one person was that I deleted. So what's nice about this approach, with open addressing, the table is always the same size. Once it's full, it's full. That can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you want your system to fail. But if you're in a scenario where you have hard limits on how much memory you can use, then this can be a good thing. What I don't like about it is that as your table fills up, all of those claims that I made about hash tables getting really fast, they all disappear because as the table fills up, we're gonna do more and more hunting. And so our table is gonna get quite slow. 
And eventually, if I do a lot of insertions and a lot of deletions over time, eventually all of my empty spots are all going to be marked as deleted. And so that little optimization that I did by marking them as deleted isn't actually going to benefit me much anyway. And so once again, performance could get really terrible. Now I could also add some code that would go through and try to clean up those deleted markers when they're no longer needed, but that's a pain. And I'm definitely not going to do that in this video. I'll leave that to you. If you want an exercise, have at. Also, if my hash function isn't very random, then linear probing can also produce big clusters of objects. So even if the table's not full, you can have problems where your performance still gets really bad. So in response to this, there are other options. There's things like quadratic probing and double hashing that people use to avoid clustering, and they come up with their own issues and complications. But for now, I'm going to leave it to you to explore these options if you need them, because I want to talk about the other alternative to open addressing, and that is external chaining. This is the one that I find myself using most often, especially when I'm worried about performance and I'm on a machine like my laptop that has a lot of memory. With external chaining, you're always going to put the objects into the table location that was chosen by the hash function, always. We don't go looking for another place. When a collision occurs, we simply just chain them up. So basically, each location in the table becomes the head of a linked list. So again, if you aren't familiar with linked lists, you can watch my videos. But yes, each location becomes its own linked list. And when we get a collision, we simply add the person we want to insert onto the appropriate list. So let's make this happen in our code. For this, I'm going to make a separate file. So we can leave the open addressing one as is. You can, you can get that if you want. Because we're using linked lists, I want to change our struct a bit, really just to give it a next pointer. And we don't need deletion markers anymore. And we don't need to hunt for open spots anymore. So here in insert, we simply get the index from our hash function. And then we add the person to the front of the list, which is a lot simpler. Now down in lookup, we don't have to look through the table anymore, but we may have to look through the list if there have been collisions. So, so here I'm going to get a temporary pointer to the head of the list at the location we got from the hash function. And then we're going to go through the nodes as long as temp is not null. So this is pretty much just how you go through a linked list and the names don't match. So, which again, this code's a lot simpler than what we had before. Not surprisingly, delete is still a lot like lookup. The only real differences relate to deleting from the linked list. We need another pointer previous, which will point to the previous node in the list as temp goes through. And of course, we could use a doubly linked list to simplify this a little bit, but that means more pointers. And anyway, I'll leave that as an exercise to you if you want to do it. Now, once the loop is done, if temp is null, then we didn't find a match. So there's nothing to do. If the previous pointer is null, then we know that the match node was the front of the list. Otherwise, it was somewhere in the middle or at the end of the list. So we handle those cases appropriately. And then in our print table function, we need to get rid of the deleted stuff and add a loop that goes through each chain and prints it out. And if I compile, now you can see that everything made it into the table and where we had collisions, we now have chained person structs. So we can basically just have more people at each location in the table. Okay, so this style of hash table is usually a bit faster and I think it's a bit more convenient. It keeps the code simpler. If the table ends up being too small and if I have a bad hash function that produces a lot of collisions, things can still be slow because those chains are going to get long and lookups start to resemble searches through a linked list, which is linear again. So it's important to have a good hash function and keep your table appropriately sized. But if you do overfill your table, it can keep growing. These chains just, they can keep growing until your operating system eventually tells you you don't get to have any more memory. And that may be really nice. It really just depends on the situation you find yourself in. But all things being equal, I usually go with external chaining because it keeps things simpler. And that's where I'm gonna end today, folks. There's a lot more that we could say about hash tables. 
but now at least you know what they are, why they're useful, and you know how to implement them. Please comment if you have questions. Please let me know if there's other things about hash tables you'd like to see me address in a future video. Like if you'd like to see a hash table example in another language, I'll see what I can do. But in the meantime, happy coding, and I'll see you later.